when people talk about trusting their guts or when someone encourages you to trust your gut, what they're saying is that you should basically lean into your perception of the world, lean into your worldview. But we've already discussed, like your worldview is biased. Your worldview is limited. Your lens that you use is flawed. It's not as accurate as the true world around you. It's subjective, not objective. So if anything, we're encouraged at CIA never to trust our gut because your gut is the most untrustworthy thing in your body. Consider the fact that the human brain, your brain and mine, is inherently lazy. The, the human brain does not like to work hard. Like people who procrastinate, there's nothing wrong with them. That is the natural way of doing things. Every single human being procrastinates something in some way. We, we wait until the latest possible minute to brush our teeth. We wait until the latest possible minute to go to the bathroom. We wait until the latest possible minute to stop doing the things that we love to do. Like we inherently procrastinate because the human brain does not like to use extra energy to accomplish a task. It likes to use the minimum amount of energy to accomplish a task. So the way that you often achieve that is by waiting until the last minute before you actually make a decision, waiting until the last minute before you think something through, waiting until the last minute before you consider somebody else's point of view. So trusting your gut means doing what your body finds natural which is inherently the laziest, least energetic thing that you can do because the human brain is built for survival. So there's lots of reasons why you should not trust your gut. Instead, what you should trust is what we call something, we call it assessment versus assumption. Assessment is what you should be doing. And the process of gaining or com of, of creating an assessment means that you are constantly collecting data especially cognitive dissonant data, which means conflicting data. You're constantly collecting data and processing that data intentionally so that you can create a current and viable perspective on what's happening around you. So if you're getting ready to have a conversation with your boss, or if you're getting ready to have a conversation with your spouse, you want to actively and intentionally be collecting information from all around you. Simple example, if you have a conversation with your spouse at five o'clock in the afternoon, it's very different than if you have a conversation with your spouse at 10 o'clock in the morning, because by five o'clock in the afternoon, both of you have expended your energy. The kids have probably stressed you out. You know, chores of the day have stressed you out. You're probably thinking about 200 things at once, whereas at 10 o'clock in the morning, you're less stressed. You have more energy. You probably just had your first or second cup of coffee. You're in a better mood. So of course, the conversation is going to go differently if you have a conversation at 10 a.m. versus 5 p.m. What ends up happening is that we have the conversation at 5 p.m. and then we're surprised when our spouse doesn't react or doesn't respond well. When we could have predicted that if we were collecting assessment right before the conversation. If we would have taken a moment to assess, she's probably, in my case, my spouse is a she, she's probably stressed out, she's probably tired, she probably hasn't eaten in the last four or five hours, and she's probably thinking about dinner and bedtime, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you use assessment, you can set up a situation that gives you a more objective chance of success rather than just trusting your gut and thinking that you're right because of a biased worldview.